Hello, my name is Karline Kavens and this is 48 Minutes, a podcast with inspiring leaders. In today's episode, I talk to Mark Bogart. Mark is an international choreographer with over 800 productions on his counter. He designed choreographies for, amongst others, Cirque du Soleil and the Royal Ballet of Flanders. I recently got to know Mark via a friend and I must say he's definitely the most intriguing person I met in 2020. I talked to Mark about his passion for art, his life lessons from the Jesuits and the sadistic side of being a choreographer. I hope you can experience a glimpse of the wonderful world of Mike Bogas. Enjoy! Welcome, Mac. You are so kind. <laughs> um, Mac, I found it actually very difficult to describe you properly. The least I can say is that you are or you have an intriguing personality. Um, how would you describe yourself? Not by what you do, but who you are. Okay, I think the, the best thing you can do with yourself is work on your bad qualities. Bad the good, qualities. The good ones we all know. That's mm -hmm. rather boring. But I, since a youth, I developed mostly trying to say, how can I leave out what is bad inside of me? Mm -hmm. And that brought me that after I was educated by the Jesuits, I went to the tough army in France and to choose this job. Mm -hmm. So to develop the bad characters. If you're a choreographer and you don't have a little sadistic vein, you should not be in this profession. So it's a bad quality you need to control. It's like aggression. It's the bad ones that are interesting. Mm -hmm as are the bad boys. So what, the, what does that tell about you? It tells me that I love being the bad boy. Uh -huh. And that you look for the next thing you can do. Okay. You don't want to be sitting in your success or something. So you always will, uh, with this attitude, you always will travel inside of you to, to find, I did this and this and this, great and be very severe with yourself and say, right, you did it, forget it, do something else, do something else, do something else. Okay, so never a dull day no. in your life. No, because you construct your days yourself. Yeah. Nobody else is constructing them for you. Mm -hmm. And before you know, you stand in front of your grave, they push you and it's over. And then you think, I should have and I could have and why didn't I? And so yeah. it's, it's also an urge for living. If, if they push you today, would you be okay? Oh, yes. I, put, oh, I would love to be pushed. <laughs> Your questions, I hope, would push me to the limit that I can strangle you at the end because you're so right. <laughs> you know? Okay. Um, you already uh, touched upon it briefly, but um, can you tell me or us a bit about your youth or upbringing and how it impacted your life? Oh, at first I was innocent and I could uh, live in the forests of Belgium as a youth. And then I, uh, like I said before, I uh, was educated by the Jesuits. And the Jesuits are known for their ultimate discipline and the creativity of the mind. Mm -hmm. And then there was a big love story in my life that didn't work. And I decided to go to the Foreign Legion. Mm -hmm. And I served five years in wow. Africa. Yeah. with the French Foreign Legion. And <clears throat> the French Foreign Legion, they are like the special forces. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but they are not the big muscular guys. They do something else. They are a little bit different. They're but dead. at the end, it's also ultimate discipline and ultimate creativity. That's what I want to ask. And the next step is then you go into the choreography of artistic director. If you're not ultimate disciplinary or creative, you won't make it. So the three basically are the same. It looks like they're different, but they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Something is happening Wonderful. here. Yeah. Let me... Let it... It will stop one day. Ah, that's your phone. <laughs> okay. Um, so... The Jesuits, do they... Because I, I know quite some people who has been... Um, Uh, brought up by Jesuits, among southern myself until until the mm-hmm. age of, of 12. Mm-hmm. Um, somehow I feel that a lot of people identify themselves with it. What is it about the Jesuits that, that is so uh, shaping? Well, it's not shapey, it is... Shape, shaping. Shaping, shaping okay. The shaping is a better to give an example. Um, you do Latin, you understand as a 12-year-old kid that Latin is good for your languages. You might become a doctor. Yeah. You never understand why you have to study bloody ancient Greek. No. I can write your name. I don't understand anything from it. Now, the real reason, uh, we always think it has to do with Plato and the education of the... It's not. Yeah. The real education in the 1700s, when the Jesuits started coming up, was... They have to learn Greek because they don't want to learn Greek. Oh. That's the reason. And that is an amazing thing. I mean, they will make you do things that you don't want to say, then we're going to strengthen your character and shape you to a human being that can have some yeah. shit in life. They prepare you. And for life. For life. And the Jesuits and the communists do the same. Okay. I worked for communist regimes and the Jesuits. When I arrived to work in Romania and in East Germany and Russia, I felt home. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know why. And it's basically the same. They play all day long psychological tricks with you. Mm-hmm. You have to master the Jesuits to shape, but the communist shape too. And there's a healthy part of it. And there's also an unhealthy part yeah, of it. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, because I'm personally a big believer in uh, in almost the opposite is like uh, finding your path that goes downstream mm-hmm. so to do the things that are so natural to you that they become yeah. easy yes but also uh, and playing in your talents okay downstream is also when a cow takes a shit <laughs> yes. it also goes downstream taking a shit upwards is much more difficult Why would you do that? <laughs> Because the you will always learn to go further inside of yourself. Okay. If I take you here tomorrow morning, you walk out of your apartment and you decide I go left instead of right. Mm-hmm. And you keep on walking. You will not die. Because oh. you're in the Western world. You do the same decision in Kinshasa. And you yeah. go to the right. You will not come back alive. But you will encounter yourself in many other ways. Yeah. And this is not a desire for death, it's a desire for life. Mm-hmm. Because you want those problems and just why do you want the problems? Or to see how good you are. Okay. Not to see that it's going my way. Okay. That's indeed an opposite. It, and I think sometimes the river takes a curve and then it goes down. Yeah. But always down makes, I think Belgium has the number seven of suicide amongst young people. Couldn't that be a reason that the resistance generation... Do you think it's because people take it too easy? They make themselves easy. For example, this wonderful country, Belgium, is an over-socialized, protective uh, yeah. country for many, many, many years. And, uh, and now something is happening. Not only a pandemic, but also the world is changing. Yeah. China is taking over. So we think, well, that's far away. No, the mentality of China is coming in, mm-hmm. slowly but surely. And she's merciless, no mercy. And I don't say it's good. I'm just saying, well, look, this is happening. And what part of the Chinese mentality is coming? 
basically, they, first of all, they buy everything what they like and they have a vision of 100 years ahead. Yeah. We well, have a vision here of three years ahead and then with 16 political parties and the vision is never going to happen. No. So the Chinese, uh, they, they just do it. And then okay. you can say, this is unfair. I'm going to protest. I'm going to do everything. And rather powerlessly, you need to put up your guards for them in another way. And what is your guard? It's your, your inner side. Mm -hmm. When they take over, what are you going to do? And I'm talking, not talking about invasions. I'm just talking about the, the whole business world is being yeah. taken over. Yeah, absolutely. And what do you do then when you are back to your mommy and when you ask for a job and they ask you to work in the weekend and you say, oh no, because then I see my boyfriend and someday <laughs> I'm going to wash my car. And in the holidays, I take my holidays and whatever. Yeah. Okay. I lived 11 years in New York. Already there, it was clearly, uh, if there you have you this work. type of attitude, forget it. Yeah. Yeah, or be clever and not work too much, but you got to, yeah. uh, in Flemish you say, weerbaarheid. Yeah, Que tu peux te défendre. Dass man sich verteidigen kann. We agreed on not doing it in German, but uh, Max is already. <laughs> it's a beautiful language to yell at people. Especially, yeah. Yeah. So, um, talking about yelling, uh, you've been part of the French Foreign Legion? Yes. What did you learn from that experience? First of all, you go to the Legion and I was competitive. I wanted to win. Yeah. Just winning. Because I was a sports guy. Yeah. Or I am a sports guy. So, it's about running the fastest. We had a march of 150 kilometers, you know, yeah. uh, and things like that. Uh, so I wanted to be the first or whatever. It's just about winning. And the interesting part, because I was young, okay, and the interesting part is in a certain moment, you're in the army and then you shoot at people. Oof, yeah. And there you learn something extremely interesting. One lesson, first time it happened. Uh, what is the difference between authority and power? Mm -hmm. And authority is, I'm an artist, I have only one boss and that's art. The yeah. authority of art, I recognize the authority of art. Yeah. She is my mistress and my lover and my demon and everything. And I'm going to do everything to serve her. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I accept it. Uh, art doesn't make me do things. Yeah. And that's power. Mm -hmm. They make you do something and they just make you do it. Like somebody, a sergeant would say, come on, shoot that guy. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. You know, you, they recognize the authority of the army and yeah. you recognize the authority of art. Yeah. Because it's something that you think is very valuable at that moment mm -hmm. in your life. That I learned as first. And have you done many things that you didn't want to do? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Like learning Greek with the Jesuits. <laughs> and then in the army going for a march in the desert where you think, this time I'm going to die. Yeah. Not knowing you were just making circles around the fort. Oh. You know, with a sergeant who knew what he was doing. Just yeah. to see how far you would go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you really want to know, eh? I you want to know when I shot somebody, I know. When? Ah, uh, <laughs> everybody wants to know and nobody yeah. of us will talk about it. Okay. Yeah. If you want to talk about it? No, we won't. Okay. Um, the, you said that I've done many things that I don't like. Sometimes people, when they grow older, they, they do less and less things that they don't like doing. Does that count for you? No. no. I was already seven years old and I was already doing uh, the, the aspect of... I lived 20 kilometers from Antwerp and my parents made me go with my bicycle to school every day. <laughs> and I was nine years old. Oh, okay. And it was raining. Yeah. And my father said, come on. And I said, yeah, okay. And in the winter, you know. But don't you go, uh, don't you get fed up of it when you get older? And no, start no, it's getting better. Okay. Oh yeah, because around you there are many people who don't want to do things and suddenly you're, mm -hmm. you're a winner. Yeah, okay. If you see now in the whole pandemic aspects we are mm -hmm. working, you see so many people, they just freeze like mm -hmm. scared rabbits. Yeah. And they have to blame somebody, first the government. Yeah. And then the mother, and then their fate, and then, never themselves of course. Yeah. So, and the and, virus. Oh. This bloody virus, you know. <laughs> so the whole thing is, um, it makes people freeze. Yeah. I think and freezing is an unhealthy aspect of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
how did you get from the French Foreign Legion into dancing? Very simple. <laughs> For me, it's I like, will say yeah. it in French. It sounds better. Yeah. Après cinq ans, oui, chef chargent, non, chef chargent, finished. I understood a lot about life, debt, all of it. I came back and I said, I've done some real strange things here. Let's go on. And I went to the professional ballet school. Mm -hmm. And they kicked me out like four or five times. What is this old goober doing here? You know? Yeah. And but I had a condition that they didn't know. Mm -hmm. I had a physical condition. So they after a while they, they said, Well, let them try. It's not gonna work anyway. Yeah. And they made me do like six classical ballet classes a day and they say it's not gonna hold out. Yeah. But he did. And after two two years, the Royal Ballet of Flanders asked me to join them in the company. Oh wow. And sometimes suddenly it worked. And was that I, thanks I, to the discipline? I wasn't the most genius character running around. I know that. But I was in the company. Yeah. Basically after a very short time. So that's uh, all those things of starting at the age of six with me. It's an exception, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And then I danced with Bejar and then I went to New York. I danced with all the postmodern people, Merce Cunningham, worked with John Cage and then Life of the Dancer. And now it's fun because yeah. now I have the age I can go into a ballet class and just create mayhem and jumping around and doing it and being in shape. Yeah. And all the people that in my days were dancing now are sitting in their garden with a sore back and with injuries and whatever. It's a pure joy yeah. to be older and to, to move. And it how, really is. how did you grow from um, being a dancer to, towards becoming a choreographer? I think you don't, you don't become, you are. Okay. It's like, how come you became a hooker? I think you are. <laughs> you just are. You know, it's a natural talent. When did that you... is inside of you to, look, if I, will be, I would be in prison, I would make immediately something with the prisoners. I did so many various projects with many United States, with so many various social subjects about abortion and whatever. You become the other person. That's the fascination of the actor. So you become an actor of many people yeah. with a certain subject and you travel in life like that. That's great. Mm -hmm. And then when I've done it, this kind of human rights project or whatever, and I'm chased by the Ku Klux Klan and all of this is <laughs> really wonderfully going because, hey, I touched something, you yeah. know, I, I closed the book. I said, this is my contribution to life yeah. for human rights. And I turned the page. Because I think everybody should do something with their own knowledge. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I, I like that you say this is my contribution to life because that's how I look at things. You have to find out your talents and then contribute yeah. to, to life, to, to the world. Um, what are, according to you, the, the most important qualities of a good choreographer? Sadism. <laughs> But in the kind way. Yeah. It's the, the best BDSM story you can make ever. Because <laughs> everybody agrees to go through the same thing. Yeah. You know, you have to understand the dancer. He comes in and then he stands again for this dude. And he's going to make him do things that he doesn't want to do. But he likes not doing them. Yeah. Uh, and then there's this whole thing. There's something with pain. It's the same with top sport. Yeah. They have, there is this pain that they want to go through. Yeah. And if you would see with lots of artists, they basically also hate to be the artist they are. Oh, yeah. Many. I, they're... But they love it. They love to hate it. It's like yeah. people who are depressed. They yeah. love to be depressed sometimes because then they look also for other depressed people. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, and and it's, it's little groups. Mm -hmm. And I, that, I think the quality of it is, is a joy of bringing... First, this physical aspect, because dancing seven hours a day, it's yeah. tiring. But then at the end, you, you deliver something. Mm -hmm. And you calculate everything like bank robbery. Yeah. With this light and this move, with this scenario, this happens. It's, it's like, you yeah. know, you calculate. Yeah. And then on the end, you sit there. When it doesn't work, you are devastated because you calculated so much. Have you often uh, experienced that? No, 
that that there was a I don't know a premiere of something. Of course, and then yeah, you it happens. Really disappointed. Yeah, but after a while, you um, one of the things is there's only one rule: standing ovation or nothing. Okay. You know, like very black and white. Standing yeah. ovation is like yes, I did it again. Yes, yeah. I did it again. And the nothingness, uh, it's a standing ovation is nothing to do with success. Eh? Mm-hmm. Standing ovation for people is an outburst of a lot of applause they wanted to give, but they didn't because they were fascinated by the story. Yeah, that is it, it's holding back. And then the other side, when it's average, yeah. it's never bad because you have too much professional experience. Yeah, if you're going to interview somebody, you've done this so many times, it's not going to be bad anymore. Mm-hmm. But it could be only seventy or sixty percent. And that's like love, no? Mm-hmm. He said, my dearest, I love you for 60%. We're going to have a great life. I, I, yeah. I don't think I believe in that. I don't believe in that either. You go 100% <laughs> yeah. for everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, talking about the standing ovation, how important is recognition for an artist? It will never happen. It will never happen. No. Never enough. Never happen. Because it happens perhaps for a momentary seconds. You know, you have your moment of glory. But if you do it for your glory, uh, once the curtain closes, everybody goes home and you sit there all alone Mm -hmm. in some hotel, God knows where. There is no gratification. The only thing you need, and that is not an easy one, the only thing you need to do is to toughen up again. Yeah. You sit there in Washington somewhere, you know, uh, and you think, okay, uh, because after the day you have your premiere, it's the day afterwards, which is worse. Why? Uh, for example, you have six bad reviews and a standing ovation yeah. and people who care about you and this the confusion of the whole thing. Yeah. It's uh, like rock bands. Yeah. You know, they say rock bands... Why do they take drugs and groupies and the whole thing and drinking? Well, most rock bands do not come from a music school. So mm-hmm. there is no professional way that they learned how to behave. Yep. So they have to pump up themselves to go on a stage. Yep. Basically, sometimes being scared shitless that yeah. somebody discovers they can't do it. Because they don't have like a training or a education like yep. an opera singer. Mm-hmm. You know, who, who learn how to deal with the voice and the scarf and the tea and the honey and yeah, yeah, my thing. Yeah. And they just go in pure emotion. Yeah. And I think the the success is the worst. It was a good question, Charlie. The success is the worst to deal with. Mm-hmm. That's why so many, many people afterwards, they, yeah. they disappear. Okay. And um, if the recognition never comes, what, what is it then that, that uh, drives you to make art? To have the next recognition that never will come. <laughs> the anticipation. The anticipation. Look, but next time it will be different. It's just like, <laughs> I mean, everybody of us has a number of people. They were boy or girlfriend. Yeah. You have a number, you know, and imagine you have your number. Okay. Your number 36 for the next guy you meet. Yeah. Who wants to be number 36? <laughs> you want to be number one. Yeah. At least for something. Yeah. You know? And that's the same. You you want to be doing this production and you hope you touch and you'll be number one again. Yeah. To do something unique that nobody did and da, 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 whatever it is. If you perform with one person in the, in the streets in Berlin, no problem, you know, or big ones. No, no. Mm-hmm. But you want to be unique. Yeah. And this uniqueness is something in this, in the arts you can find. Yeah. If you study Greek. If you study Greek. <laughs> And our disciplines. Um, wait, there was something that triggered me. Unique. Yeah, I forgot about it. It will come back. No. It's called aging. Um, yeah, talk for yourself. <laughs> you have to first catch me that I don't remember my questions. <laughs> Uh, ah, now I really want to know uh, to prove that I'm not aging. Um, yeah. You know, okay, I'll help you. Oh, yeah. You got it? I was thinking, yeah, of course, okay. I'm not aging. <laughs> okay. Uh, question was, to me, being creative is something that's like a resource. I 
correct me if you see it differently. It's something sometimes you are very, sometimes you are less. It's like uh, mm -hmm. going up and down. Mm -hmm. Are there things that help you being creative? Creative for me is a never ending story. Uh -huh. The eyes go open and you say, I'm going to get out of my bed. I'm going to crawl out of my bed. That's, and you're all alone. Nobody watch you crawling out of your bed. <laughs> yeah. But you think you're pretty cool doing this. Yeah. That's creative. And you're not afraid of. Mm -hmm. I have a habit of in many, many places, I call it, I do my little dance. I've yeah. done this in the supermarket. I do this everywhere. Uh, what, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do this stupid little dance, you know. And... People look at me, the cashier sits there, you know, this big lady with the sausage arms and she's smiling so happily. Yeah. Or I, I, I go in something, you know, like, nice. or, or very contemporary, you know, here comes Aunt Teresa, yes. Yeah. So I just do this for people. It's okay. a signature, mm -hmm. like Zorro. <laughs> yeah, when you leave the... the and that's great. You, 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 you have to. Yeah. It's like the clown. You, you have, have to, to why? you have to, because inside of you, you, your little eyes are little, they're like, what can I do? You know, what yeah. can I do? You, you, you take every moment as an opportunity Yeah. and then you go wrong. Yeah. You do this, you know, it was a time that I, it's real painful. I took airplanes and I distributed my biography to the people on the plane in the hope there would be some producers sitting. Can you imagine how painful this is for people? <laughs> and on the moment I was doing, I thought I was very creative. Uh, yeah. I wasn't. I was just plain stupid. You know, it was distributing, hello, hello, my name is Mark. Yeah. And the people, they're like, what is this idiot? <laughs> yeah. Witness of uh, Jehovah. Yes. I was <laughs> a witness of Jehovah of the arts. I swear to God. <laughs> Which brings man? you to, what is the price you want to pay in your life to have this joy? of mm -hmm. doing art what is the price you want to pay yeah. that is a that's a that's a that's a a yeah. balanced one yeah okay um it's a bit of a random question but do you have any unusual habits but maybe it's you already <laughs> answered the question <laughs> unusual habits or absurd thing that you love doing but you actually you actually that's just answered my leg it's not my fault <laughs> Uh, no, uh, I think uh, unusual habits um, are too artificial because people feel it's like you see a kid of four years old, he looks at you, he's going to like you or not. Yeah. That's one of the things. And you cannot be the clown or you, nay, he's, when you do something, a little dance for him, he's going to think he's weird. He's, he has my age. Yeah. I like him, you yeah. know. That's why I love to work with like special Olympians because uh -huh. their truth is so truthful. Yeah. They just tell you in your face, you smell out of your mouth. Yeah. You know, they, 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 there's a truthfulness. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, what are for you the most important themes in your life? Keeping if, your word. Uh -huh. Calling back. Calling back. Uh -huh. <laughs> calling back okay that's it there's not more okay because keep you say something you do it mm -hmm. and the fatter the contract in generally you should read the contract of Cirque du Soleil every sentence is a lawyer mm -hmm. so nothing with keeping your word is in there and um, that's one of the army things you know you keep your word Yes, is yes. Yeah. If you promise something to somebody, I met somebody a while ago, and it's a woman, and she had a dream to be a DJ in Tomorrowland, something like that. <laughs> and then I thought, well, that's, that's a big dream, but it's a good one. So I said to this woman, you know, you really want to do that? And yes, 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 I want to do it. Okay. So I brought her together with a guy, and then she went there. Yeah. And she went there to, and she had the experience, you know, of this moment. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, the DG said, okay, pay me. And I went to her and I paid it, which is logical because I said, I will do this for the woman because I think there is something. And then that's what I could give. You paid him. 
Of course. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. He's a friend of mine. Okay. You have to pay your friends. Is Don't it? you pay your friends? No. Oh. That's why You're one of friends. those. That's why they are friends. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. Next question. <laughs> Next question. Have you ever lost your passion for art? No. No? No. Not a moment no. that you were thinking about this? First of all, I she's a woman. I go and work in a, as a cashier. She's a woman. And um, she's a miss, like I said, she, she does everything to you. Yeah. And because, uh, but I never lost it. I fought like a lion to whatever, to pick it up again, to go to another country, to, to take a bus and leave the place where I am and go somewhere else where I don't know anybody. And again, it's again the people you're going to meet that are going to make the fire go again. Mm -hmm. The fire has been sometimes a little bit low, but yeah. I always thought it's temporary. Yeah. Is it? Of course, because yeah. in X of years I will be croaking and being in another yeah. world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what, what, what inspires you to make art? What, what are the things that... The seconds you can amaze somebody for one second or you can give an emotion they cannot describe, or it has to do with the other people. It has nothing to do with your self-fulfillment. It has to do mm. that you can absolutely, with whatever it is, it can be a nice, wonderful, heavy lady with a little guy that I make a duet for, or uh, something with Sergio Soleil, or many contemporary things I did, all of this. Um, it's about the amazement of the other ones. Okay. And because if you think on the simplistic story of why do we have theater, mm -hmm. the Greeks thought everybody wants to be a god. It's this story. Eh? This is not possible. No. But let's believe in their god. Yeah. That's why Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet is so genius. Because everybody wants to be Romeo and everybody yeah. wants to be Juliet. Yeah. And hope even with the worst relationship, they say, look, I wasn't Juliet for this man. Yeah. He didn't do his efforts. Is it important that people uh, recognize themselves in art? No, I don't think so. Okay. I think it's, um, it's like the big question you're a bit aiming at. Can art change the world? Yeah. And the answer is very clear. Yes. Okay. For one minute, for half an hour. Yeah. Because in the time you are there and you are having something, this experience, you should go into another world. Yeah. As a, somebody who looks at it. Mm -hmm. So is the most important thing about art not how it looks like or what it is, but the emotion or the feeling it gives to the yes. audience? Or the thought process or the revulsion or repulsion or yeah. everything with re. Uh, yeah. That they want to reenact it, what you, they just saw, whatever it, it needs to. Because then the dialogue makes sense. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, and when you can witness it, it is amazing. Yeah. Ah, as a producer. You witness it, you stand somewhere behind the pillar and there yeah. you see what you created yeah. is happening. So, you know? and if you would be watching your own productions, you would rather watch the audience or the production? There's one thing, in my life, I once looked at two performances of my own production. Oh, yeah. it doesn't happen a lot. I never do. I'm gone. In generally, I'm gone with the reception. Yeah. And they don't see me back. Because I do not want to reward myself with this kind of feeling. I <laughs> cut it off and uh, go to the hotel or whatever place. And the day afterwards, I uh, have a kind of attitude. Okay, now you have to go running t 10 kilometers or you have to go, you know, like... Don't think you made it, you know, <laughs> to, you know, the, the dialogue to yourself. Don't think, you know, don't think anything. You just like. Yeah, sounds like a Jesuit thing uh, to say. Yes. Yeah. On, yeah. In a leg legend, in an art thing. It's like not being done in sitting in this cafe with the other black clothed artists who yeah. dwell yeah. in the whole thing. It's, yeah. uh, it's yeah. not my aspect. Okay. I'm like. Smashing the fly. Cool. 
So, so you're taking only the hard part and not the. But the the joy was the being, joy. The joy was being with all those people. Okay. You know what a what a wealth it is when somebody works with me, and they you know the, it's called holy ground. Yeah. You know how much effort it was to find the money, mm-hmm. to do the fundraising, to go with all the things and all the and then finally you got those people. They better behave. Mm-hmm. Because that's we serve now the gods of the arts in this room and we are yeah. together. And I better respect them and I better find some things to make also the dancer. Wow, I mm-hmm. like this for me yeah. and all of, of that. So uh, when then somebody is starting about his contract yeah. or uh, I need to go home or all of yeah. this then with me, it's not a good idea because yeah. they don't know they're on holy ground. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, you have a rather uh, eccentric style, I think I can see that. What's the I wouldn't know. weirdest thing you've ever asked a dancer to do? The weirdest? I have a good one. It's about nudity. Uh-huh. That's a good one. I'll try to tell the story. Yeah. Because it's... Um, Uh, for the production that I did for Royal Ballet of Flanders with not strictly Rubens a while ago, I wanted uh, that Rubens would see something amazing for one second, it would turn and she would be gone. Yeah. You know, nudity, yeah. uh, because the paintings of Rubens nudity. So I wanted a young dancer to go on point, make a little swirl, nude, nude and, and go. So it happened and I... First of all, when you work for a company like that, it's a good story. When you yeah. work for a company like that, they put it out for the the, the union, and it's like hanging. Ah, they have a union. Yeah, they have, yeah. And then then you already, Mr. Mark Bogarts is looking for a person, you know. And then you come in, and already the atmosphere is like minus 20 degrees. Yeah. What do you think we are? We are not horse and this whole thing. It starts. I didn't know that. And then the second point is you. So you people, I ask. Nobody said something. And then they come secretly to you. You know, I would do it. But my boyfriend cannot know. I said, it's going to be a bit difficult. We're going to film you. Okay. <laughs> uh, and things like this. So there was one woman that I, a girl that I said, she is it. Botticelli hair, the whole thing. I said, this is perfect. Yeah. And I asked her. Mm-hmm. And she said, no. I said, yes, but no is the beginning of the negotiation. You know, it's not, you're not going to give up. Ah, uh, no. When I say no, it's no. And she wanted to stop the conversation. But that's very uninteresting. I want to yeah. know why. Could be that she has some, yeah. something in her body, you know, whatever, yeah. perhaps a scar or whatever. Yeah. That, but that was not it. So the time goes by, I find somebody, and then the girl comes back. The same Botticelli girl comes back. And she said, look, I'll do it, but only the front. I said, it's going to be difficult if you have to turn around. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. And she was gone again. And this took. And every time she saw me, yeah. there, there she is. Every time she saw me, she <laughs> fled in the toilet. Yeah. But I wasn't this pervert thing. I just wanted to have this scene with yeah. this girl. And then a moment she came up to me. And I will never forget. And I learned a lesson about my own idiocy. Mm-hmm. She said, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not 17 or 18 as you think. I'm 24. And I'm a virgin. And the first person who has to look at me is the man I will love. And I sank in shame (laughs) in my shoes. And that answers your question. Like, how can I be wrong? Yes. And then I took somebody else, of course. (laughs) You know, but the point was, you never know. Yeah. That was, I think, the the most that uh, reveals you. Oh, that's a, a cool story. And once we run the show, everyone will know that we will be the ones that hold the highest true. And once we run the show, everyone will know that we will be the ones that hold the highest If you could have a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, uh-huh. um, With a message to billions of people, mm-hmm. um, what would you put on there? An arrow going up and an explosion. Your life. Yeah. 
Can you explain a bit <laughs> what's the message? Imagine I think I understand take an arrow that. going down in an explosion, your life. <laughs> yeah. This is not good. There is only one way. You gotta go oh. until the gods come and get you. Yeah. Yeah. And all the rest unacceptable. It means uh, go full. Staying out of mediocrity. Yeah, your own mediocrity, which we all yeah. have. It. Eh? It's it's a. Uh, uh, go parachute jumping, yes, go and find your five boyfriends, do it and yeah. realize it's your thing, it's not your thing uh, and, and try this and change country and... Yeah, yeah, taste, taste uh, life. Taste life from, from all sides. Yeah. Burn, not like the candle from two sides, but the candle with five, <laughs> then try to burn and control this whole thing. Yeah. And for this, I think we come back to the first uh, discipline. That means no drinking, no smoking, conditioning yourself. Because mm -hmm. the wildness is not the aspect of the drugs or the booze or the messing mm -hmm. around. The yeah, wildness that's what is means. something else. Okay. And for this, you need to be in shape. Yeah. That's a very strange one, but it's really yeah. true. Yeah. And why do you say uh, drugs, uh, alcohol are not, not a good thing? Because you think you're creative. Yeah. You ever hear somebody who took marijuana, what they say? <laughs> yeah. They think they are so great, you know? Yeah. If you take something, take at least cocaine, because at that moment, what you say will make sense. Yeah, okay. Okay, you will die afterwards, but that's a detail. Yeah. You know, like, uh, mm -hmm. so the, the, the aspect of uh, artificially, yeah. I think is a form of weakness. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you can do, it's like, if you live in this wonderful Belgian country, can you imagine? I mean, there are three things that happened with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. First, they said you can't go to the cafe anymore. Mm -hmm. ah! Belgians and cafes, you know, this yeah. is the only way, I, this is the only idea we have to meet each other. Second warning, you can't go to restaurants anymore. Well, yes. that's the only thing the guy can come up with. Let's go and eat something. And the third <laughs> one is they can't go to the Hubo anymore. <laughs> you know where they gotta find all the stuff, those three aspects, Belgium will be destroyed forever. Yeah. They're never going to make it. Mm -hmm. This is too sad. Yeah. And if you think, well, replace it with something. With what? Oh, with, what should you... people do when they're bored? It's not about, you can't go out. I did it a week ago. Mm -hmm. You can't go out, it is forbidden, no cafes. So we took uh, a woman I know and me, we took somebody in the back of the car mm -hmm. and we put champagne and whatever and then she had a date and I was the driver <laughs> in my Armani suit you know and the yeah. woman was a Dutch woman yeah you know and we drove okay and we drove around yeah until and I was in at 12 o'clock and the both of them had a great time and yeah. I was just sitting in front being James <laughs> James. you know like and there was nobody out mm-hmm why not? You know, like, it's, it's so simple. It's, it's, uh, uh, find something. Yeah. There's a big difference in New York. If you present something to somebody with an idea, they say, yeah, okay. And what's your next idea? And your next? And your next? Uh huh. You know, if you don't have anything, why are you bothering me with your, yeah. you know? In Germany, if you come with two ideas, they don't trust you. Why? Because they think you're not deep enough. You uh, didn't yeah. search. One is enough. You, you won. And that's yeah. good überlegt and that must be sein and blah, blah, blah. And in Belgium, if you come with an idea, well, they all run out. They go, they run to all directions. <laughs> because it might disturb their lives. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yes, I think that's the worst of this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't disturb that they can't wash the car. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think you do, but um, do you believe in afterlife? <laughs> I already tried. <laughs> I think this question is great. Yeah. yeah. I'm the lucky bastard who was three times in an airplane that crashed. What? And I survived. And there was once in the Legion we had a crash and uh, we all thought we would die. We were convinced 
Then uh, it was a big airplane that crashed with 35 dead people and I slided out of a burning airplane Oof. and I had to crash, that's a funny one, in a small airplane yeah. that run out of gas and we landed in the snow in the forest. You mm -hmm. know, tree. But every time, believe me, you know what people yell when they think they're gonna die? Mm -hmm. Also when they're shot, do you think they yell for God? I don't know. No, they yell for mo their mother. I, uh... In all languages, mama. So I think if we would make a new religion, you and me, yeah. it would be a church with two big breasts <laughs> with an entrance. Yeah. And I think mother gives us life yeah. and takes it back. Mm -hmm. That's your religion. I think at that moment that's where I'm at because I know at the end people, when they know they're gonna die, Sometimes it's God, but most of the time what I witnessed was mom, mom. mama. Yeah. And um, so that's the afterlife, you know, your question yeah. about afterlife is, uh, are you sure that religion is an answer uh, to something? Or is it just fear of dying? This is a question to me? No. Oh. I have better questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, imagine you would have had a life before this one. Who would you? Who could you have been? A rabbit. Why? I love the rabbit. Yeah. Because at night he sits in the moon. You know, he messes around like hell. He makes yeah. many other little rabbits. Yeah. So I think a rabbit would have been a good one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, in what way are you disciplined? Uh, character? Well, character? What are things that show that you are disciplined? Oh, it's just your daily your behavior. Yes. I see daily. you at four o'clock. I'll be here at four o'clock. You're, you're, yeah. You're, you're keeping your word and, and sometimes I think it's, um, it's not this superficial discipline of getting up at five and doing your things. It's something else. Uh, you do something, you give your word, which we yeah. talked about, and then suddenly you realize you have to do much, much more than you thought to keep your word. Mm -hmm. That's discipline. Yeah. Because suddenly you realize, oh my God, now I have to pay a thousand euro to keep my word. Yeah. And then I need to take a plane to keep my word and 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 mm -hmm. and at the end you do it and then the person even doesn't care yeah sometimes you know you do all this thing for somebody and then you find yourself also nice because mm -hmm. you do it and then you do all the efforts and at the end the person says yeah mm. you know and that, do you regret that's them? the discipline do you regret them there is i know it's in english but there is a great uh you know, in, there's a Dutch word, it's called barmachtigheid. Mm -hmm. And uh, barmachtigheid is that you forgive somebody, you know, you do something for somebody and the person spits you in the face and you forgive him. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate yeah. goal. It doesn't work all the time because I am trained, I will smash him on the face. Yeah. But you try to look at the person, why is he or she behaving yeah. in this way? And you try to understand just before you smash them on the face. Yeah. Why are they doing it? Why is this yeah. person behaving like that? And sometimes those three seconds of bread can say probably the person has something that I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know? Sounds a bit like compassion. Yeah. Yeah. But not negative, not no. from up to down. It's just like yeah. uh, looking and analyzing in a couple seconds what to do. Yeah. It's like fighting. <laughs> what does uh, beauty mean to you? Beauty? Every woman is beautiful one second before her orgasm. It's the most beautiful second you can live. Yeah. I even would compete with art. So <laughs> if I see how people behave, you know, the, the good looking woman with the look, look, good looking guy who is just one head taller and the, 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 the same Porsche people and the backfit people here mm -hmm. and the whole thing. It's a big tribe. 
mm-hmm. and I do not think they look for the beauty. They no. looked for something which would look good with him mm-hmm. or with her. You very seldom see a woman from one meter eighty with a little chubby guy going around, and perhaps yeah. she would be so happy with him. Yeah, and that's beauty. Yeah, I saw in Berlin uh, a woman walking with a guy, and he was like really chubby, but he was so colorful. Yeah, and she was absolutely gorgeous, and she had him on his neck. Yeah, you know, and they walked like this, and he <laughs> loved it. He loved it. I yeah. and I stopped. And I ran to the florist and I went and I got by my knee and I gave him flowers, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, because that was beauty. Yeah. Because they admitted this kind of thing. Yeah. This, um, it's like the one second just before, you know, like it's, it's okay, I give myself. Yeah. I give myself to allow myself to be with a guy like that. Yeah. If you look at, there is a company price waterhouse, mm-hmm. you should go in there. It's really fun. It looked like they found cloning already before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all have a yellow tie, the woman with the black pants, yeah. and, and the whole thing in the same type of car, same type of house. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's something, and you, you just look because that's the behavior that is asked. Yeah. And that's not beauty. It's not colorful. Eh? It's not colorful. No. It's absolutely, it's sad, basically. Yeah. They have to play a role all week long. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what advice would you give to young people entering the real world? Run back. <laughs> <laughs> Run back. You were so happy before okay. and now you're standing here <laughs> in the real world. Yeah, what is the, as if there is a real world. Yeah. Okay, so uh, there are other things to You can try to see the world always, you can make it yourself, you make a, a world for yourself, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I can give an example, but I, I found uh, a reason why, like in Belgium where it rains, Scotland also, you know, it rains all the time. Yeah. And in Belgium it rains like this and it rains like this. It's the only country where rain comes from both sides. <laughs> okay. If and you then you see the Monday morning in the half dark, you know, seven, yeah. 7.30 walking. And they all have this kind of walk, yeah. okay? And you sit in the car, you see them walk by, and they, they run almost. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're in speed and things. And I wonder, first of all, where are they going? And why are they looking so in a bad mood? Why, why is this the urge? And I found, I found the solution. They all come from their lovers, mm-hmm. and they have to take a poo. <laughs> and they're looking for a toilet. <laughs> and that's, it's a great... You know, because yes. you do, if you stay with your first lover, you yeah. don't want to go for a poo because you might smell. Yeah. <laughs> so you go somewhere else. They're all in a hurry to find the toilet. And now every time I sit in the car, I, the people who are listening to it, listen, look tomorrow and look at those faces and you will find another world. <laughs> you have to create your world. Yeah. And you find many things to... It's wonderful. A child until the age of seven thinks he's the middle of the world. Yeah. And then suddenly they become adult. Yeah. And then, you know, and I think people who can't go back because they want to go always forwards, you know, to age, to become wise, mm-hmm. to become intelligent, grow up, become an adult. I think it's an art not to. What would be the advice that young people usually get that they should ignore? Exactly that. <laughs> Exactly that. Why is everybody studying law? Because they have nothing else that gets in their mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At least when you study uh, like social political studies, you're a great conversation in the middle of the night. You, f- you will not find work. Yeah. But you can talk about various anthroposophical things. Yeah. You know, like it's also a useless study, basically. Mm-hmm. But you, you can absolutely be an entertaining person. You know, because, but if you don't, if you, if you give up your, what you wanted to become. Yeah. And this goes beyond the kid who wants to become a policeman or a fireman eh, mm-hmm. when you're age. So at the moment you're 16, 17 and you know exactly what you want. Yeah. And then you go to the fashion school 
and you know exactly what you want and you make the nicest amazing designs yeah and you're 19 you're a bloody genius you're confused and the guys have pimples in the whole you know this you so but you know so well yeah and generally it ends you go and work for the cna yeah you go it's a pity yeah and the reason is because you didn't study greek yeah because you give up and suddenly you meet the boyfriend and now we go for a nice little trip and then we do this and then we do that and suddenly the whole thing you believed in mm-hmm. that it's ecology or whether it disappears mm-hmm. in mediocrity of basically the mediocrity of uh, what are other people gonna say yeah and what is my mom gonna say and yeah. you cannot underestimate that so many people listen to the neighbor mm-hmm. you know and they give up or they try it and they see oh this new world of fashion is not yeah. exactly as nice as I thought. Yeah, there's some downsides. Uh, yeah, most are downsides. Well, yeah, then you have to go. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is your... Uh, I ask this question to more people. What is your uh, relationship to money? Money glues things together. Mm-hmm. It glues things together. Um, and the smarter you are with money, the better you can glue things together. Mm-hmm. It's not about, you cannot buy the whole thing. You just have to glue two and three things together to get the big cake. Mm-hmm. That's what money does. And I must say that if you pay people very well, and they're an asshole, they will keep being an asshole. Yep. If you don't pay them and they're an asshole, they also will be an asshole. Yeah. It doesn't change people on the inside. Mm-hmm. It makes you be able to have less problems. Mm-hmm. But what is essential stays. Yeah. And do you feel that... Um, do you think that um, art should be subsidized? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I always see it as following. Here we yeah. go. The, the, the caves in France, the guy is making his besom. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he's going with the paint and the whole thing. He sits there in his skin and he says, Honey, yes, darling, did my subsidies already come in? And she says, No, they took them away. Oh, no, no besoms anymore. <laughs> that's it. Are you, because the, what is subsidies is a very tricky thing. It is somebody gives you money because somebody else could write something on paper very well. Yeah. Rule number one of subsidies, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that this means nobody comes and checks you out. Mm-hmm. You write it. Yeah. This goes down to other people who have a little knowledge mm-hmm. to read and to see if your figures are correct and whatever and then they give you the money who says you can do it yeah there is almost there is no control there is an administrative control and whatever but this is the product that you create at the end a valuable one not a qualitative oh is it so what you need to do you need to have money Mm -hmm. to glue together somebody what you can do in your mind very simple to write it down really complicated, yeah. give it to the arts world with the complicated phrases they love, and then you get the money. Mm-hmm. And then you can buy your house, perhaps. So the answer, so the, the, the answer is, um, it, the subsidies is, a, is also a big cheating business. Mm-hmm. And they say the arts and the arts this and the arts that. Uh, I also have seen artists, they don't cut each other's throat. They saw it over to have the 3,000 euro. Yeah. You know, the, the whole thing of getting money by writing something is a strange system. Yeah. And uh, then, of course, the other side is if you have to look for your own money. Mm-hmm. First of all, this is really not nice. Mm-hmm for two reasons because your mother when you came out of it said you're a genius and you believed her yeah so you think somebody should give you the money Mm -hmm. 
you know, like you think you have the right of it because you're creating beautiful stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the, the next thing is, well, it's humiliating to be kicked out. Mm -hmm. Who wants to be kicked out? Nobody. You go with your file and you think to all the companies and you're number 50 that day mm -hmm. and they kick you out. And then you get angry, you want to have the subsidies and so, you know, like you, yeah. you, the, the, and that's what we talk about. What is the price you want to pay to get what you believe in? Yeah. And I think there you have to admire kids of 16. They want to go to Tomorrowland and they find the money because mm -hmm. they really want it. They mm -hmm. go and wash cars and they yeah. ask the grandmother and they're doing it and they steal something and whatever. Yeah. And they get and they're suddenly there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and with the arts is the same thing. And one of the yeah. things that I learned with the, 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 the aspect of money, yeah. which is absolutely fearful, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, it makes my product of what I want to create much better because yeah. I have to fill in something. Yep. Yeah. You know, so the, the, the subsidies makes you think better. Yeah. It's your product, your, better, your product will be getting better. Mm -hmm. Okay. And generally, you will not get the money anyway. You know? But at least the product But at least your better. product has been, uh, uh, you know, they, it, because people will ask you questions you never thought of. Yeah. You know, all of this. So your product might be, you serve the gods of the arts on a, on a, on a better way. Yeah. And I think it keeps you very uh, <laughs> alive that you are a good person, but you're not special. And you're just somebody else. Is it difficult for an artist to realize you're not special? Well, they hope they're special. Of course, they're not. Yeah. They're just the same as uh, somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, they just do something else with their creativity and, and what they want to do. Yeah. And there, of course, we save the world <laughs> because we make music and we do this and this yeah. and this. Uh, and that's why, okay, I lived in... 38 states in the United States Whoa. and I counted them once and they get 2% from the government and the rest it's themselves. Yeah. Okay. And don't say now Americans are superficial and all this crap. Uh, the way they have to find their path mm -hmm. has possibilities because it's normal that when you believe in something, you can ask everybody. Yeah. I can put you now out, okay, you go and say you come back with 20 euro in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Why is somebody going to give you 20 euro? Because I do a dance. <laughs> we could try it. We put you, you go out, <laughs> come back, 20 euro. <laughs> you know, and I give you how, how many time you think you need to, before somebody gives you 20 euro? Um... It's the same process. 20 minutes. 20 minutes? You want to ask a man first? Of course. Yeah, of course. But there, then you're a hooker. No. Yes, you're an art hooker. <laughs> They're going to give you the money. You know, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a, a, you can talk hours about it, but it is <laughs> a really, uh, the knife goes from five sides. Yeah. About the not funding and not, and if you see what's going on in the world now, mm -hmm. the doors of art are closing slowly and certainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there comes the next thing. Yeah, but are we, what are we going to do now? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, nobody said you had to buy a house. Mm -hmm. You know, the yeah. arts world is not responsible for your house. Will the arts always survive? Of course. Yeah. Something else will happen. Yeah. And it will because the caveman, he, he will continue. Yeah, that's true. What's the, the biggest misconception about Marek Bogarts? I'm too lively. <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a misconception. <laughs> yeah. It's a. It's that people see between after well, with liveliness or whatever, they miss the seriousness. Yeah. And that is. Uh, the big mistake because the seriousness is exactly why you can be like that yeah because if you're like this and there is nothing here you will not do one production mm -hmm. you will not survive any ideas you will not survive yourself yeah because you have no roots you know mm -hmm. uh, so behind the liveliness there's a serious 
You have to. Person. Yeah. But the the liveness is also a way how you can deal with so many various things. Yeah. That's... Who wants to have the sore guy coming in there? Mm -hmm. You see them coming in through the door, you know, like already you say, oh my God, there's the person, there's yeah. again. And I think we have a lot of not happy people today. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because they love to dwell in the, the problems there are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the relationship, it goes like that. Mark. Yes. <laughs> we need to talk. I go upstairs, I take my suitcase, and I know the story is over. It's finished. Okay. <laughs> this tone, when your girlfriend says that, this mark, you know already, you did already so many mistakes that she didn't tell you or whatever. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. What type of uh, lover are you? I am, I think, the the one who believes only in three. That's already uh, since I'm 11 or 12. I cannot imagine only having one person. Yeah. And, you know, it has not only to do with sex, it's the complexity of it. Mm -hmm. The three is the best sex ever, mm -hmm. but it can go so wrong, <laughs> okay. you know? And with two, it's safe, but it slowly goes wrong. Yeah. You know, so you, you, you make your... It's a bit like the Romans, the triumvirat. Yes, you know, I know. It's strong. No, no. Yeah. If you and me and your assistant are going to plot something, mm -hmm. it's going to work. Yeah. When you and me, it's going to fall. Yeah. So the, the lover is the, the facilitator of mm -hmm. you want something, I'll get it. Mm -hmm. And you try it and you say, oh, this was really wrong. Yeah. And I think that's what people don't do with each other because they're scared. Mm -hmm. We try it because it can go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you try this fun thing and suddenly yeah. the fun thing is not fun anymore. And Okay, so three is the mag magical number. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think for all things. And I would even say um, the American Indians, they had uh, five genders. You know, okay. there were men who love women, women who love men, women who love women, men who love men. And then the transsexuals, they were the, the lucky ones because they had both in themselves. They had, the gods gave them something special. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you look at that story, the, 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 the guy was a, a certain moment. He was in the day, he was a, a woman yep. and woman clothes and whatever. And then he went on his horse and he became a man and the woman the same. Okay. This homosexuality didn't exist. Mm -hmm. The first thing what the missionaries destroyed was that. Yeah. They had an open-mindedness of uh, sexuality, which we will never catch. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, is, is there a skill that you don't possess and that you would love to possess in your afterlife? Not being so lively <laughs> would have me a peace of mind <laughs> that at night when I wake up, I wake up sometimes, yes, I got an idea, I got to do it. You know what, I shoot out of the bed and I start... Does it happen? It's things like that, you know, because yeah. uh, suddenly I think, okay, we should do this and it should be green. And I take a plane to go to yeah. Australia because there the green is best, you yeah. know. So it's a quality in the afterlife. Uh, would somebody put the arm around me and say, it's okay, Can sit be. down, it's okay. I think that's the dream. Uh -huh. But I don't know if it's going to happen. Have you ever tried meditation? Yes. And? Oh, it was wonderful. I lived in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I was a hippie. Yeah. I had a bush of hair, a Harley Davidson, and I had the whole thing. And we were in a group, kind of, we meditated up to a zoo. And it really was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's not about being impatient or so, but it, given me, it never gave me the energy and the focus I needed. Mm -hmm. That's very strange. I really, really, really tried my best. Yeah. In the community, in the belief of we're going to make a, a better world, we shall overcome. You know, we did it all, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, but it didn't, it, it should give you a new strength or a focus mm -hmm. or everything. It didn't. I get to focus with 40 kilos above my head and lifting it. 
or yeah. something like that that gives me strength physical something yeah quiet yeah. alone strong mm -hmm. i love to do stupid jobs like repetitive belgians 90 percent of are are constructing at their house you can call me and there is those bricks they have to be from there and they have to be there tomorrow yeah. and the whole day i go like a slave back and forwards i love it why because it's thoughtless and it makes you yeah look good and you're physical and you it's the dumb jobs and that is my yoga yeah it's your uh, okay yeah i will look differently at uh when you go you construction for your workers <laughs> like <laughs> like uh, monks yeah on the roofs oh that's a nice image <laughs> um so, it's a good title for a book yeah monk on the roof <laughs> monk on the roof yeah eh? yes Okay. What would you do if you wouldn't be an artist? I would be a criminal. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I would do. I would be so rich. And what uh, branch? Bank robbing, I think. <laughs> bank robbing. Yeah, I think bank robbing. It's well orchestrated. Because you can have the driver and the whole thing and the thing and I think bank robbery, uh, dime stealing and things. I don't think so. But but yes, I think bank robbery. I would be good. Yeah. Because there is a lot of calculation going on. Yeah. Psychology. Yeah. Depth psychology, body language. Timing. Timing, um, getting up in time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, of course, you say, and I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't know. Um, but that's, we talked about it. That's again how you control your, your bad qualities. Yeah. And I think the physicality is one of them. Yeah. If you can't control it, you, it has to come out. Mm hmm. If you look at all jails, the guys look like, because that's the only way the weightlifting that they can control something yeah. big was going inside of them because yeah. they're locked up. Yeah. So the physicality is a... It's a way to decompress. Yes, but the creativity is also the, the creativity of war. Mm -hmm. You know, I probably would have been already lying dead in the Sahara or whatever if I wouldn't stop my service. Mm -hmm. Because I was very creative. Yeah. I was. I had a special job there, and you buy me one beer, and I tell you, okay. uh, which I can't talk about. <laughs> but that's the creativity of it. It's yeah. not the strength or the the weapons, or it's just. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. What's your biggest regret in life? Agelessness. That. People do not understand that um, the regret is that wisdom comes at certain moments and when you're ageless, you're, you, you still have time that it will come when you're 150 years old. Mm -hmm. And then a certain moment you got it yeah. and then you say, look, but luckily I am in a position that I can look honestly back and say, look, I, I, I believe in this and this and this. Yeah, but I did it in New York or I did it. I was done there. I did it. Yeah. The regrets were not mm -hmm. too bad mm -hmm. because I, I can't complain. Mm -hmm. You know, like I did all the f productions of Studio I did production in Studio 54. This was not a discotheque. This was Jan Faber avant la lettre. Yeah. With everybody covered with blood and naked and zombie music and mm, and, and we did it. Yeah. You know? And that I think is interesting. Yeah. We're calling you again. That's the man I should call at six o'clock. Okay. Okay. So, shall we do one more question? Yes. Okay. What can I wish you for the rest of your life? Those two minutes that I still have to live? Yeah. That's better. Eh? Yeah. Give me a hand. Okay, Mike, I really want to thank you for your time. I really want to be happy with you. <laughs> <laughs> and your inspiration and your way of making people see or feel things differently. Uh, I wish you all the best in continuing uh, with your creativity and, and making the world a more colorful place. Uh, especially in these uh, dark times. Uh, oh, no, no, they're wonderful times. Yeah. 
the darker it gets, the more light I want to give away. My whole life is ballet, classical ballet, dancing with the pond shoes. And when I heard these ideas from Mark, and I want to dance with the girl on wheelchair, tennis player, I said, like, how and what I'm going to do? zichzelf overwint om, om, om tot een prestatie te komen dat hij misschien uh, in het begin niet eens mogelijk achtte. En dat dan nog iemand anders ook meer weet te inspireren, dat ja, is een soort van geld. I, I will be king And you, you will be queen Some listen can drive them away I we could beat them forever and ever we could be heroes just for one day once you see his his world you started to believe mm -hmm. it's it's we can change something we can create a new future. Spotify or Apple Podcasts or subscribe to our